Hey guys, it is Miss Simrino. If you are returning to the channel, welcome back. And if you're brand new, I am so excited that you decided to join me here today for another speed build. And today we are building the Pink Palace Apartments from the movie Coraline. But I did make it a single family home, just fair warning. I'm really, really excited to share this one though, because let me just think about this. So last year I did Malfoy Manor. That was the first time I tried to build something from a movie in The Sims 4. But of course I had to take some creative liberties because we only saw certain parts of that home. And I think the same could probably be said for the Pink Palace Apartments. We primarily just see where Coraline's family lives and the attic space where Mr. Bobinski lives, but we don't see anything else. Well, oh, I'm sorry, we see the basement as well where Miss Fink and Forcible live, but I didn't build that. Okay, so maybe this isn't an exact replica, okay? <laughs> but I just wanted to build the exterior. I tried to get it as close as possible in regards to looking like the structure, and I hope I nailed it. I was really, really proud of this one because the build itself, or this home itself, is a very odd shape. It's a very unique Victorian looking home. Now I used a few different pictures for reference because there are tons of pictures of this home on like Google and Pinterest and stuff like that. And there's actually a fair amount of models that you can look at too that give you every single detail on the exterior and every single side of the build, which I think was really important for me to actually build this because off to the left-hand side, if you're looking at it straight on, there's like a glass conservatory off the side, there's a side entrance, there's an entrance off the back of the build, and then there's of course this staircase that you can see from the front going off to the side of the build, which is how Mr. Probinski gets to his attic apartment anyway. Um, but it was just really good to have so many reference images to work off of because I think that's what I've struggled with in the past if I tried to build something from like film or TV is you might get the front of a building and then you get to see glimpses of certain rooms, but you don't necessarily get to see the whole build. Now, as I said, the exterior is pretty much what I was replicating. I did whatever I wanted with the floor plan on the interior. There is no separate attic apartment, <laughs> but I do have this fire escape still is what I would consider it off of the second floor. So that's nice. It's not really that useful for the Sims, but it's nice for show. And I did build the conservatory, which ends up being the dining room, which I loved so freaking much. And this lot is fairly small, so there isn't much of a backyard, or there aren't a lot of activities. Actually, I can't say there aren't a lot. There are no activities on the exterior, and I didn't decorate the porches either. And I tend to do this when I build in Forgotten Hollow, and I don't know why that is. Mm, if I, actually, if I'm gonna think out loud, it's because this is the world that came with the Vampire's Game Pack and vampires don't spend a lot of time outside during the day, which is likely when you would do a lot of outside activities. So maybe that's why. <laughs> maybe my brain is following that logic, I don't know. But you can see that the exterior shape is coming together at this point. I do get rid of this porch and this turret piece off the back because again, this was, this was actually prior to me looking up additional reference photos. I had a photo of the front, but I hadn't looked for photos of the back and I ended up finding those. So I changed the back to match to the best of my ability. And I also add, like I mentioned, the glass conservatory off to the side as well, which I think we do see briefly in the film. I think Coraline walks in there to count all the windows and doors and stuff. So we see it very, very briefly. But again, I think proportions in The Sims don't translate super well from real life into the game. So I wasn't able to replicate a floor plan. And this build was not as spacious as I thought it was going to be. I was looking at it thinking, this is gonna be a pretty decent sized house, isn't it? Like, I think this could potentially be four bedrooms, like three bathrooms, something like that. But I did not have that much space. It's a three bedroom, two bath. And I think it was actually challenging to find spaces for the bathrooms of all things, <laughs> which was a little bit odd, but here we are working on the landscaping. So I took these rocks from the vampire debug menu, as well as most of these plants, like the grass and these dead rose bushes. And since I used terrain tools, I did have to use the tool mod to lower and raise these items to really make them look as though they were growing into the hill with its shape because of the terrain tool usage. It's something, if I had one major complaint or issue with terrain tools and landscaping in The Sims 4, it's that the items for landscaping will clip to a certain height and they won't just seamlessly 
I guess kind of like glide up and down the different height of a terrain manipulated space. Do you know what I mean? They clip to a higher space with the grid system and it makes it really, really challenging for landscaping to look natural when you're using terrain tools. That's like my big issue. So using the tool mod is a godsend for that because it makes it look, I'll say more realistic, more natural. It's never gonna be perfect for me. I don't dedicate too much time to make it look super, super natural, especially because I didn't want the landscaping to be super overwhelming. Whenever I build in Forgotten Hollow, I try to make it, I won't say dead, um, but just not very colorful. And in some parts, maybe not super lively. Like I used a lot of the dead rose bushes, but I didn't want this to look desolate or super creepy either because the home in Coraline isn't necessarily creepy. It's creepy in the alternative kind of universe you get into, but the house itself is very pretty. <laughs> I very much like it. So I wanted the landscaping to look natural, but I didn't want it to look completely dead or abandoned or anything like that because I didn't add cracks or scratches and stuff to this house. I could have gone all out and made it like an older, worn out Victorian home, but I didn't take that approach with the interior when I was doing the furnishings and things like that. So I didn't add like cracks or stains or anything. And therefore I didn't want the landscaping to look completely abandoned or dead either. But now we're moving on to the interior, which I said is very difficult or was very difficult to floor plan. It's again, the turret pieces make it hard. I think this conservatory made it difficult, but oh my gosh, I was so excited. I got to use the archways from Realm of Magic. I cannot recall. Oh wait, no, yes I can. I can recall the last time I used them. It was last year or the year prior. I made a hobbit hole. Also one of my favorite builds of all time, by the way. I made a hobbit hole and I was able to use one of these archways because all the, all like the hallways and stuff and archways in hobbit holes are round, of course. So I used it there, I haven't used it since because it's for medium wall heights and I never build with medium wall heights. And I just thought that the style and the intricate details of those archways were going to be perfect for this more sophisticated Victorian look that I was going for on the interior. And I went real bland with color, you guys, but I really, really liked it. I was struggling with a color scheme selection for a really long time. I thought, oh gosh, are these gray floors too boring with the whites and the cream colors? But I ended up finding a way that I think it works out really, really nicely and still looks as though it has a fair amount of character, even if it is very matchy-matchy, let's say, um, on the first floor. Upstairs in the bedrooms, I did, of course, use a little bit more color. I didn't match even the primary bedroom to this color scheme from the rest of the home, which I would typically do, but I needed a little bit more here. <laughs> I needed a little bit more outside of whites this kind of dusted gold and gray and creams and things that I use throughout the entire first floor. But I love this living space so much. I use the fireplace from the Paranormal Stuff Pack. I almost call it a game pack because that's how it feels. <laughs> but I have the Paranormal Stuff Pack. And then I used these medium wall height bookcases from Discover University that I also never get to use. I use these base game curtains, which are probably some of my favorite curtains, especially if I'm doing this style of build. And then I just decorated this mantelpiece with a few different, hmm, we'll say like creepy, maybe magical vintage items. I don't really know how to, art how to articulate it, but that's kind of what I was going for. And now I wasn't building this specifically for vampires or werewolves or spellcasters or anything like that, but I think this home could be perfect for any of those occults because it just has that just has that style and great use for the turret, by the way, I'm very proud of myself for doing this. I've done it before and I will probably do it again is I add the grand piano into that space because otherwise I don't have room for a grand piano, which granted we do have the standing piano at this point, but using the grand piano in a build like this just felt appropriate. So I stuffed it into that turret and it's perfect because it doesn't seem to obstruct any walkways. There's still a lot of open space here in the entryway where I have this console table. And then I've just got a lamp and I think I just put a piece of artwork up there. I've got one right now of Goodry from the Paranormal Stuff Pack yet again. Um, but I might try to make a fancy mirror. I never, I didn't come up with this, but I did utilize it in a couple of builds way back when, where you take the picture frame from the Vampire's Game Pack, it's a really, really big one, and then you can use 
the mirrors without frames. I think they're base game, I can't recall. And you can actually merge them into the frame to make it look like a giant framed mirror. I think I'm gonna do it right here. This one right here, this is what I was talking about. It's huge. Um, so I did size it down ever so slightly at some point, but this is how you kind of blend the mirrors in. However, I wasn't able to make it work with not wanting to kind of have it blocked by what's on that console table. And I thought that console table was perfect for that space. It was a really odd attempt to balance things out for me. So I took a breather from it and I just quickly decorated the dining room because it was so pretty and I decorated it so plainly. I've got this table from the Vampires game pack, base game chairs, base game rug. And then I use the three pronged like candlestick from get together throughout this build as well, which I really enjoyed. And then I also use these base game curtains. So much of base game complemented this build and I was thrilled by it. And another thing I never get to use are those windows from the romantic garden stuff pack. Always forget that that exists to be completely honest with you. Literally always forget. And another item I love are these rugs, I'll call them separate rugs because they are technically separate items. You've got the end pieces and the middle pieces. So you can make your own runner rugs from the Vampire's game, back, game Pack. We also have one from the Realm of Magic game pack. I love that. I think it's something underrated in The Sims. I will say that. I love those rugs very much because you can make your own length runner rug, which is something I struggle with a lot of the base game runner rugs. But here we're working on the kitchen. Now, don't judge me because I'm not a huge fan of the kitchen. I'm okay saying that about my own build. I am, I think it's fine, but I really struggled. It was a much bigger space than I was anticipating. I didn't want it to be over cluttered. I wanted it to look fairly clean, but I wanted it to be on theme with the rest of the build. So I made a bit of a galley kitchen with a bigger island in the middle because I had the space. And that's also when I kind of decided, you know what? I wasn't making this specifically for an occult, even though it's an older home, they likely have just redone the kitchen a little bit where they have more modern appliances. It seemed safer uh, and it seemed to work. So hopefully you guys don't mind it, but I used the cabinets from the Vampire's Game Pack and then the countertops from Realm of Magic because what did we not get when we got these countertops with Realm of Magic? Matching cabinets. Hmm, matching cabinets. Could you imagine? We didn't get them. <laughs> I'm still salty about it. I don't know why we wouldn't get matching cabinets. I also cluttered the kitchen off camera because that room took me the longest and then I quickly decorated the bathroom with all vampire game pack bathroom items with those touches of gold. I think this gold's a little bit brighter, a little bit more yellow and saturated in general than a lot of the golds and creams that I use throughout the rest of the build but I think that it worked. I really liked it. I love the big, I can't even call it like a high back. Is that kind of what it's, is that actually what it's called? The toilet with, maybe it's a high back toilet. I don't, I don't know, but I love the older fixtures. So I used those downstairs as well as upstairs in the bathroom. And now we're on to the second floor where again, there is going to be another bathroom, which I believe I decorate off camera. We've got the primary bedroom and then two more rooms. There's also a fireplace in the hallway because why not? I had a weird little two tile section there. So I used it that way. <laughs> I put a fireplace there. And I was also able to make the staircase a little bit more open just thankfully, because none of the roof pieces jutted in there. And then I worked on the primary bedroom, which I don't know if it's my favorite room. I think it's my second favorite room. Mm, maybe. I've used the color scheme before in a primary bedroom. I think I did it with the good vampires home that I did last year for the Vator family, which is probably one of my favorite builds to date. If you guys haven't seen it, I would recommend it. Um, I think it's cool because I had... Lilith, Lilith Fator is married to a very like old Italian vampire. They've got, I think, three kids. And then Caleb is like, he's like the traditional vampire uncle who still sleeps in a coffin in the basement with, you know, the laundry and stuff like that. But Lilith and her husband have been trying to raise their kids and lead their lives as less traditional vampires. They live off of plasma. They don't hurt other sims and Caleb is like the paranoid grumpy uncle that like I said sleeps in the basement in a traditional coffin and doesn't want to drink plasma and I think that him and Lilith's husband 
really butt heads. Because <laughs> um, even though I think that her husband it comes from like maybe a very, very old vampire family in Italy, I think that he is a very strong advocate for blending in with other sims and kind of abandoning old traditional vampiric ways, if you will. I just loved that conflict. It brought me joy. But anyway, in their house uh, for Lilith and her husband, I also used this same color scheme, which I really, really liked. It's a base game bed with a very deep green and a gray wood. So I used these gray woods for the vanity and the fireplace and the wardrobe and this grandfather clock it was so great because they matched a lot of the vampire game pack items. And then I also used that high back chair from the vampire game pack in green, which matched the bed. It just brought me a lot of joy. And I think this is probably of all of the differing gray wood tones that we have in this game, because let's be honest, we have a few different ones. That's probably my favorite one. I love it. It's almost, almost a brown gray, but it's really pretty. And now this is going to be for a teen. Now, I didn't think I was gonna like this room and I ended up loving it. I used this bed from the high school years expansion pack because I thought that it still kind of fit the style a little bit, though it's got a modern design on the comforter. And then in the turret piece, because I had no idea what to do, I added a bay window seat because I think it worked really nicely. So it's kind of like a reading nook. And I was able to use this one from Cats and Dogs because of the gray wood that matched. I was thrilled. I was so thrilled. I was so happy. I thought it came together really nicely. And then I was also able to give this teen sim a dresser. I was able to give them a vanity as well. Now I was thinking that this teen sim, I don't know again if this is for an occult family, but I think that they are very much into makeup. I think they really love books but they also have this fascination with all things creepy crawly, even though that's not necessarily represented in their space here. I have that poster from, uh, what's it called? What is that from? Is that from Growing Together? I think it's from Growing Together. I say oddly enough, because it just seems kind of random, but it's of Forgotten Hollow, where this house is built. And it's just a creepy poster and they have it right above their wardrobe. And I just liked the idea. I don't really know what it means for them, but I liked it. They also have a bookcase, so there's, you know, an activity in here. Outside of that, I wasn't really sure what their hobbies were. I didn't go too, too deep into the family, but the other room is going to be for a child sim, and the child sim likes a little bit of everything, but is also really into science. If you were to put a family of vampires here, if you were to put a family of vampires here, yeah, why did that sound funny when I said it? If you were to put a family of vampires here, maybe the child is... I don't know, just really into science and is trying to find even an alternative for plasma in the future. Like they're, they've they been dedicating their whole childhood with tinkering around with different tinctures and mixtures and potions and they're trying to find it. I don't know, maybe it's something their parent does and they want to help, which I think is a sweet idea. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just talking off the top of my head. I have no idea if that's something that would work for the purposes of storytelling, but I liked it. And we're actually moving on to that kid's room, which... I used vampire game pack wallpapers for every single room. I love this blue, it's very bold. And I ended up having the curtains match this blue, which I usually wouldn't do. I'd usually have them a different color to kind of contrast a bit, but I really liked the blue here. I was able to use this realm of magic bed, which was perfect. And then this child Sam, like I mentioned, does have the chemistry station in here. They do have a little tiny writing desk, the one from the paranormal stuff pack. And then they've got a dresser and of course some other things to play with and check out as well. They've got all the night lights. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but when I make kids rooms and toddler rooms, all of the night lights. I never forget a nightlight. I don't, I don't, because you know what? I've learned through gameplay. You don't wanna forget those nightlights or your kid will be waking up with a monster under their bed and nightmares every single night, multiple times a night, and you'll go nuts like I did. <laughs> but we're actually almost to the end of the build as well. So I hope you all like this one. I don't know if I'm gonna have other Halloween themed builds this year. I am, I'm kind of in a rut with Halloween builds and I don't really have many ideas, but this one I was really proud of and I couldn't wait to share. So I hope you all enjoy it. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts and I will catch you next time I post a video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.